song again as soldiers of Christ. On what Christian soldier marching on to war, looking on to Jesus who is gone before. On what Christian soldiers marching on to war, looking on. Let your name be glorified. Amen. As we listen to your word of faith, the word to step us up so that we'll be strong as soldiers of Christ. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus as soon as. Amen. Amen. Soldiers are their way of dressing. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that we are having this, concluding this program that started three days back or two days back. Our three days program we are concluding today which is entitled A Gallant Soldier of Christ. If you hear me say Amen. A Gallant what? Soldier of Christ. Amen. amen. And we took our test from where? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. But we shall be writing down verse 1 to 15. Amen. Amen. A gallant soldier of Christ. That is whom we are. A gallant soldier of Christ. A gallant soldier of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 A gallant soldier of what? Christ. Of Christ. Glory to God. Amen. I told us yesterday that a soldier. Amen. Amen. I told us that a soldier is the person that fight war on behalf of his country. And they are also keep peace keepers. They keep peace on behalf of their country and their country can send them to go and keep peace and fight war so that there will be peace in another country. Like the country we are here now in Spain, they have some of their soldiers in Syria. They have some of their soldiers in some part of the war where they are fighting war. And so what are they doing there? They are making sure that their peace will return back to that country. If you hear me say amen. amen. Say peace must return. Peace must return. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I also told us that the soldier is also an ambassador. Remember, an ambassador, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, he said, as an ambassador of Christ, we should be able to prove Christ wherever we go, to represent him in another, any place, anywhere we go. So an ambassador is somebody that represents his country in another country. And you can also be a soldier inside your country. You are still protecting the country. Hallelujah. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20, describe the dressing of soldiers. How soldiers dress. 
when they are going to war and how priests of God should dress when they want to offer sacrifices. And why am I putting on this uniform, ladies and gentlemen? I am putting on this uniform to represent spiritually and physically how soldiers need to dress. Soldiers dress like this physically, but spiritually they should also dress like this. They have knife in their pocket, they have gun they are carrying, and they they wear the red so that to protect some other things. Hallelujah. Amen. These are some of the addressing that address. Amen. Amen. So at times they bear it like this. As soldiers. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. 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 And so in the spirit, we are required to dress like that. As I am standing now. We are to dress like this in the spiritual realm. Because we are preparing to be bold. You have your boots. You have your uniform. This uniform in the cold season, it becomes hot. It becomes make you warm. As I'm here, I'm feeling very warm. Amen. Amen. It's in the cold season, we are now during this period. It makes me feel warm. And so the Bible describes the Ephesians chapter 6 that we should put on the whole armor of God and be strong. As good soldiers of Christ. Yeah. And so as soldiers to the nation, you don't forget your boot at all. See, I forgot my boot at all. I'm not a good soldier now. But as a gallant soldier, you don't forget your gun. You must hold your gun. And my gun here today is my Bible. Amen. Amen. It's your sword. The Bible describes the word of God as a sword. And the sword is not just the physical one we are seeing now. It's a spiritual one that you now have the word of God. You have to study it and eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 15, he said, I found the word of God and I ate it. Amen. So you have to keep eating the word of God and become part of him. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are not aware, you should be aware by now that Satan the devil is already defeated. Amen. Amen. I said Satan is defeated, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Satan is defeated, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Satan is defeated, ladies and gentlemen. Satan is defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I ambassador. Reverend Innocent Justin Eyolai has overthrown the kingdom of darkness on behalf of Jesus Christ. And right now, together with the angel of God, in support with Angel Michael, according to the decree of all the rebels, and Satan the devil is the rebel against the kingdom of God. And so I, Ambassador Innocent Justin and your guy, is standing here together with the Jamaica according to the decree of the rebel, the decree against the rebel of the federal government instituted by Jesus Christ. Here you, everybody has to remain calm wherever you are because you have got the victory now. You need not to fear the devil again. Yes. Furthermore, according to the decree against the rebels, which is Satan, according to the section 12 of the book of Revelation and subsection 11 of the same book of Revelation, he said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by his word of his testimony and by the word of his testimony and they loved on their lives up to death. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we call this victory that we are going to practice now because the kingdom of Satan has been overthrown? Amen. If you hear me say amen, amen. say we got the victory. Furthermore, I encourage everybody to 
stay in your house and do not be afraid. Furthermore, Satan remain in bondage and in chains according to the session decree of against the, the, the rebel against the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. According to the decree of the punishment that have been set aside by our God in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, we have seen that as the war go on, Satan the devil fell down and he cannot get up again. If you hear me say amen. amen. Shall we go to that portion of session of Isaiah whereby Sorry, we are by Angel Michael together with Innocent Jassy and the old member of Born Again Christian Church International. They overcame Satan the devil and overthrew his kingdom, and we are now ruling over the power of over the kingdom of darkness with our light in us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open with me and let's see how Satan the devil was defeated last night. Amen. Please somebody help me. We will overcome Satan the devil as a soldier of Christ in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14, you are going to see how Satan the devil was pushed down by Reverend Joseph just together with the angel of God, the Jemaican. We are by together with the angel of God, we defeated Satan the devil with the members of one of the church, we defeated Satan the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you hear me say amen, amen. say I'm a soldier of Christ. Say we got the victory. So we got the victory. According to the decree of the session 14, some section 12 of the book of Isaiah to some session 14, we are going to see how Satan the devil, together with the part of the weekend, they will have thrown and cast down. Amen. If we have to say amen. amen. Everybody should remain calm. Do not let anything worry you. Satan the devil is no longer in charge of your life. Amen. Our God is now in charge Amen. of your life. Amen. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and 6, He said, you and I, we are now seated together with Christ in heavenly places. We are now giving authority and giving command over everything. You are now in charge. Say amen. amen. According to subsection 14 of the book of Isaiah, subsection 12 to verse 14, let us read it. How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou called down to the ground with this weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Ladies and gentlemen, is it good? Is it right? Can Satan the devil exalt his throne above the throne of God? No. no. Say with me, no. no. Say we are now in charge. We are now in charge. Over the earth. Over the earth. We are now in charge. We are now in charge. Physically. Physically. Spiritually. Spiritually. Satan the devil is not in charge of our life. Because he has been cast down. Because he has been cast down. Let us move ahead. Verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. It's not possible. It's only our God that sits in the side of the north city on the great side. Amen. If we hear me say amen. amen. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Can the devil be like the most high? No. He is toying with the tiger's tail. He is toying with the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the Bible says that our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so when Satan the devil came, our lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, he ate up Satan. Who is a small rat? Say, so Satan, you are a small rat. If you hear me say, amen. amen. According to the decree against the rebel, who rebel against the kingdom of God, the decree has been said in the book of Revelation chapter 12. We are going there again. That Satan is there with totally banned in prison right now. And they cannot rise anymore. If you hear me say, amen. amen. So when you are going along the street, 
thinking that you start moving on, don't be afraid of Satan anymore. You are now in charge because Jesus Christ, together with the church, has overcome the powers of the wicked. And Lucifer, who tried to weaken the air, who tried to weaken against your life, he tried to bring sickness against you, he tried to bring death against you. Now you are now in charge. Say, I'm in charge of my life. Revelation, subsession, the decree against rebel. Satan is the rebel leader. And so we have overcome him. And don't, be, don't, don't mean to be afraid. Subsession chapter 12, verse 7. This was how the war started. Verse 7 of the self session 12 of the book of Revelation and sub session 7 of the decree against the rebel, Satan the devil. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angel. Verse 8 and prevailed not because he was. Holy my, because neither was the place found anymore in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old Satan called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angel were cast out within. Holy my, if we hear me say, Amen. Satan, the devil, has been apprehended. He has been caught in chains. Because there was war in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, every day, every time, there is always war going on. And do not mind Satan because you are not in charge. Say, I'm in charge of my life. Say, I'm in charge of my life. Say, I'm in charge of my life. In the name of Jesus, I'm in charge of my life. Say, that the devil is no longer in charge because you have been defeated. Because you have the victory as a soldier of Christ. Say, I'm a soldier of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are moving on. Amen. We are moving on. Amen. That is the news we have for you of the overthrow against the kingdom of darkness who tried to be ready. We were in charge before in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Chapter 1, God created man and woman. Chapter 2, Satan and devil tried to come to the sea. Chapter 3, he tried to take our, our crown from us. From our brother, amen. The first creation. Who was the first creation? What was his name? Adam. Huh? Adam. Huh? Adam. Adam and Eve. Amen. And Adam and Eve fell. But the Bible says in the book of Revelation here, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9 and 10 and 11 and 12, that God Almighty, the angel of God in the market, together with born again Christian church, and myself who is standing here, representing Christ today, overcame Satan the devil, and we took the keys from him. If we hear me say amen, amen. say we are soldiers of Christ. Say we are soldiers of Christ. Let's move on to Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. We have the keys now. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid against Satan anymore. Say, I have the keys. I have the keys of life. Say, I have the keys of life. Say, I have the keys to my life. Satan never cannot rule me. I am in charge. Say, I am in charge. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Revelation chapter 1. Amen. 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 Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 and 18. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is come, which is come, the Almighty. Verse 18, the strong verse, whereby we use to overcome Satan. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever more. Amen. Amen. I have the keys of hell and death. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the key. Oh. The key has been forged. 
Say, I force the key of my destiny out of the hand of Satan who stole it before. The Bible said that Jesus Christ has the key now of your life. So your destiny is not more in the hand of the devil. God now controls it and he has given you power. The Bible says in Matthew 10 verse 1 that God gave you power against unclean spirits to tread on serpents, to heal the sick, to be alright, to profess ah, He gave you power. If you hear me say, they say, have the power of God. Have the power of God. So you have the key. Your key is with you. So the key to your prosperity is with you. Your key of your life is in your heart. Stop selling it to another person. Stop leaking the secret of what will kill you for another man. Are you hearing me now? But the man you are selling the key of your destiny. The key of your destiny is with you. Say, I have the keys of my life. If you hear me, say, Amen. Amen. As we are talking right now, Satan the devil is bound already. Amen. He's bound already. And he's waiting for judgment. Because we are the soldiers of Christ. We fought the battles. We have the victory. And today we are maintaining the victory. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. My topic says this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. The victorious dimensions of a gallant soldier of Christ. The victorious dimension of a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Say with me the victorious dimension. Of a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, Abraham was a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Another one was David was a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Put your name there. Say, I was a Jackson in your life. Put your name. Say, I'm a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. If you hear me say amen. Let's move on. Praise God. Let's go back to our scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. If you are writing, you write 1 to 15. You are a gallant soldier. The victorious dimension of a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Let's read on. Are you with me, ladies and gentlemen? Let's read 2 Timothy and show to you how you have been victorious. What is your dimension? The dimension of a victorious Christian. The victorious dimension of a gallant soldier of Christ. Hallelujah. These are the ways you and I, together with the Jamaica and the host of heaven, will overcame angel, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and is defeated already in bounds and chains. Let's read it. Verse 2 and 3 of 2 Timothy. Verse 2, 3, 4. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness. The Bible says we shall endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warrant entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath called him, who hath chosen him to be a soldier of Christ. If you hear me say amen. amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. He said, You are a good soldier of Christ. He said, As you live your life, you should live your life that will praise God. As you live your life, you should live your life that will bring honor to God. As you live your life, you will live your life that will bring praise to Him. Because He is a mighty God. As a good soldier of Christ, there is nothing you cannot do. Because you have power in with you. And you have the spiritual God with you. Say, I have power with me. Say, I have spiritual God with me. So I'm a victorious soldier of Jesus Christ. If you hear me say amen. amen. Now, how do you get the key? One of the key of the victorious dimension of a gallant soldier of Christ. I give you one of the keys. One of the key is that as a victorious soldier of Christ, one of the key is that you are a good messenger of God. Say, I'm a good messenger of God. Say, I'm a good messenger of God. Look, a soldier of Christ is a good messenger. Amen. Amen. And when a country says 
represent the soul here now. For example, spirit that I'm representing here in the physical. You remember this is your flag? This is your flag? Yeah. And I'm representing spirit here because I'm preaching from Spain. Amen. But in the spirit, I am representing Jesus Christ and God. And when Spain sent you as a soldier, you know that your name is already on the list. And they said you are going to go to Middle East, for example. Like Afghanistan or Syria that are fighting war right now. He said you are going there. You are carrying the message of God to that. You are carrying the message of Spain to that place. And so I said, go so that of Christ. When you go out, as Christ sent you out to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to preach the gospel, you preach it according to what we please God that sent you. You do the message about the message how God sent you. You don't interpret the message. How God gave it to you. Go. Go and declare the message. You don't change it. So most soldiers who declare powerful messages, people hate them. They don't like it. So that might be very true. Amen. So as a child of God, do not let people bend the truth of God in your mouth. Keep saying it. Keep preaching it. Because you are a soldier of Christ. If you hear me say amen. amen. Let's go to it, the place where we took our quotations. Mm. Glory to God. Right. Second, first Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. Good messenger of God. A good soldier of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic still says this morning. My topic says the victorious dimension of a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. The victorious dimension. Of a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. A gallant means strong. It's a very it's a vocabulary image, which means to be strong, to be brave, to be fearless. Say, I'm fearless. I'm fearless. Are you afraid of Satan? Say, I'm not afraid of Satan. I'm not. Say, I'm strong. I'm Say, I'm fearless. I'm so, the word gallant is from a power, very powerful English word, which means to be fearless. And so as a Christian soldier, do not be afraid of the enemy. Amen. Fight the enemy amen. to the last call. And no retreat, no surrender. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. Let's read it. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. Read for us, please, if you are there. The Old Testament. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are moving ahead. Right on. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. The Lord came and stood there. Okay. Calling as the other signs. Uh -huh. First Samuel. Okay. First Samuel said, Speak. Mm -hmm. For your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, mm -hmm. See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears, the ears of everyone who hears it in tangle. And that time I will carry out against any, everything I spoke against this family from the beginning to the end. 13. For I told for I told him that I could judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His son made themselves compatible. You can stop them, please. You can stop them. What are we saying here today? That a very good soldier of Christ passed the message of God to his people. To where he's going to. He doesn't change the message. If you hear me say amen. amen. And so God talked somewhere when somewhere was in the temple. He was listening and serving Eli, prophet Eli. And God called Samuel, said, Samuel, and Samuel did not hear. I thought it was um, Eli that was calling him. He went back again to lie down. And God still said, Samuel. And when he now finally heard that it was God, Samuel, uh, the prophet Eli told him, said, Look, when you hear again, he said, Lord, I'm, I'm hearing you. That was the fourth time. He now said, Lord. When God now said, Samuel, he said, Lord, I'm hearing you. The fourth time. And so when God called you, do you hear him speak to you to send you an errand? And the Bible says that God sent someone an errand. Go! Go! And he sent him. And Saul, Saul was one of the people that God sent somewhere to. Amen. And so when Samuel went out, he was beginning to do the work of God as a priest and as a soldier and as a prophet. He went out to do the work of God and he was very successful. What are we saying here tonight? That as God told Samuel, Go, I am sending you. Samuel obeyed the work of God. He obeyed the voice of God. He said, I will stand tall. He said, I will carry the message of God. I will never change it. I will display it in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the people that carried the messages of God in a wrong way was Saul. 
The Bible said that God told Saul through prophet Samuel. He said, now go to a country that is called Amalek. Amen. And, and destroy them. But when he got there, he heard that, he saw that there was a big cow. He saw dwellings and he passed on and he then kept them. And so when Samuel came, the Samuel, the man of God that sent Saul, that sent King Saul to go and destroy the Amalekites. He said, have you finished? And he said, yes, my Lord, I have finished. Saul told Samuel, I have finished it. Because Samuel was a prophet at that time. And Saul was a king, manageable king. But he was all too faithful. Amen. And so Samuel was a very great soldier of Christ. And everything that God ever sent him, he ever did it. When God sent you on error, tomorrow go for evangelism, do you do that? When God sent you on error, fast and pray, do you do that? When God sent you on error, study the word, don't leave this house today, do you do that? As a good soldier of Christ, when God speaks to you, he will do exactly what he says. But what happened to Saul, he was not a good soldier. He was just a hacking, packing soldier who was deceived, who was not ready to be fighting the battle. Amen. Yes. And so what happened? As he hit some of the animal, someone told him, he said, but I'm hearing the sound of blinking, I'm hearing the blinking of some animals. He said, okay, we just kept that up. What do we start up for sacrifice? Someone, that was where the word come from. To be obedient is better than sacrifice. Amen. He said, obey God, don't be sacrificed for that with this one. Hallelujah. And so Saul was not a good messenger of God, but Samuel was a good messenger of Jesus Christ. If you hear me say amen. amen. Now, a soldier of Christ is a prayerful soldier. A prayerful soldier. I'll give you some of the key that the dimension of the soldier of Christ. If you hear me say amen. amen. A very powerful prayerful soldier. Let's read this place. How we should be prayerful. Hallelujah. Amen. First Thessalonians of the Bible. We are going to see how soldiers pray, soldiers of Christ. We have to be steadfast. We have to put on Christ. We have to pray without stopping. First Thessalonians 5, around verse 17. Glory to God. We have to keep praying. No matter what we face, we have to keep praying so that our problem that the enemy tried to bring against our life, they will all be rolled away. If you hear me say, Amen. 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 Glory to God. Mm. Are you in First Thessalonians? Chapter number 5. Amen. Amen. These are the qualities of good soldier. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, verse 17. A good soldier pray without stopping. That is the need to stop something. So as a good soldier, you pray without stopping. You keep praying according to the word of God. You keep praying no matter what you see. Because God can reveal to me that pray for the other pastor in England. Pray for so so pastor Chris. Oh, it's not my member, it's not my pastor. No! You pray for him as a soldier of Christ. And that is your commission. Because you don't discriminate the name of our son, God is born in the Christian church. So that member is not our member. We are not going to pray for him. No! As a good soldier of Christ, you are an ambassador. Say, I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador. So, ambassador is somebody who represents this country and that country. And so, you are representing Christ. Amen. As an ambassador, you are a spiritual ambassador. And so, everywhere you go, let them know that Jesus Christ is living inside you. If you hear me say, Amen. Amen. I will give you a story of the testimony of a young man in America, too, when America was fighting war. It is good to be prayerful. This one is one of the sub-headed key to a Christian success who want to be a Christian soldier, a gathered Christian soldier. So that when they walk from fighting war, because there is a particular push, after they have fought war for some time and they have defeated some of their enemy, they will go there, the commander will call them, go and rest in that boot. No, they will rest for some time. Before they know that enemy is coming, they will not go back to that place. That time, the commander has not told them to return back. But one of the recruits, he sneaked and went back to the, to the, to the boots. And the commander cited him. Anybody like that, you think that he's become a man for them, they are going to kill him. So before he, he ordered that they want to kill him, he said, okay, let me ask this one right question. Why did you go back, why, why did you go back to the boots? 
Now you become an enemy against us. He said, okay. He said, I went to pray that we will succeed. <laughs> that was God free him. And do you know what happened? He said, so you, you mean you can pray now? He said, yeah. He said, pray the way you pray. Let me hear. <laughs> and he prayed the prayer he ever prayed in his life. <laughs> To the battleground. This one said, do or die fair. And so, our, 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 another key is that no, no retreat, no surrender as a soldier. Once you have entered the war, no retreat. The man was trying to retreat. No retreat, no surrender. You must not surrender to the enemy until the battle is over. And so, when your country sent you, you keep doing what you want to do for them until you finally conquer the enemy. And so, we as soldiers of Christ, Christ has sent us to the nations. To help you propagate the gospel of Christ. Everywhere you go, tell the good news. Everywhere you go, be a prayerful person. Everywhere you go, remember the word of God should be in your mouth. Make a good example, soldier of Christ. Even when others are failing and disgracing Christianity, do not disgrace Christianity. Prove that you are different. Say, I will prove that I am different. I will prove that I am different. Yes, another time was the 56th president of America. The 56th president of America, his name is uh, Abraham Lincoln. There was a day during the war, during the war time, he was fighting war that very time. And then that is the Second World War, it, I don't know what, but it was a particular war that he was engaging as a president that time during his tenure. And suddenly he declared, in the midst of the war was not yet over. He said, now, so, 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 they, we are going to go to church to give thanks to God because we are already victorious. He president of a country, saying that we are giving thanks to God, he brought so many presents to the house of God and they began to offer prayer of thanksgiving. And that war, America, became successful. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. And so, a, 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 a gallant soldier of Christ, Ori Madiaga, he gave thanks to God even when the battle is not yet over. You don't complain when we go outside and pray. As a gallant soldier of Christ, you are always in the church. You don't need to be tossed around. I vow for myself that I have seen five years Christian, a, a person who is a Christian, five years Christian believer. How do you first thing, brother? You didn't come to evening service yesterday. And he come to church once in a while he lies. And he said he's a born again. When you ask him, are you born again? Say, I'm born again. And you don't come for evening service. Wednesday, you are not there. Bible study, you are not there. Friday, Bible you are not there. On Sunday, you rarely come to church. You need to stand and know where you are falling. The Bible says that you must know where you are falling and come back again. Let's take this one. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. In the midst of weakness, you are supposed to be doing what? Strong. A Ghana soldier is strong in the midst of weakness. Watch things, American soldiers especially, when they are acting things. With one leg, they still carry gun and they until the battle is over. And so in the spirit you are having gone with you. Your prayer that is your gun with your mouth. You begin to speak in tongues, you begin to preach the gospel, you begin to pray. Because your mind has become a bullet, not more a physical bullet. In the spirit, you are supposed to be dressed all the time. A soldier is always ready. They don't put their bed when soldiers want to eat. One of the qualities of soldiers. So, so they want to eat like put bed like this. <laughs> Those soldiers do it. Because bed, the, 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 the bed they can ring any time. The trumpet can sound. They don't remove their shoe when they want to eat. They don't remove their bed. Want to eat. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody today. Right. And so you are not permitted to be weak at all in any condition. Amen. Amen. Let's go to that place in Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Joel 3, I think so. I preached it here. Joel 3, verse 10. Joel is in the midst of some scripture that people find difficult to go there except you are sensible. He's hidden around Ma Ma Micah and uh, you know Amos in between uh, before Amos you see Joyce. Yeah. Have you seen it now? 
Joel 3.10, I read for you. He said, beat your plowshares into swords, and your prony hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. He gathers so that he is strong in the midst of weakness. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to be proud for you. I'm only giving you about testimonies. Amen. Yeah. Testimonies. When you are supposed to be strong. Oh my, I don't know what I'm talking to somebody. Yes, you sir. must not let the benefit of your promoting grace and faith seize in your life. Except when I feel Don't say that I don't feel it. Because we are all in the flesh here. But we can prophesy and say, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Any minister you ever heard about your greatness, they feel fever, they feel sick, but they don't think that they are sick. They carry their microphone in the midst of weakness, the link of your sickness, and you say, where my man keep on knows this diaba? Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich, and they will carry my microphone and prophesy. You say I'm prospering. Say I'm prospering. Say I'm well. Say I'm well. They will not show you yesterday or the other day. After it has the other day I was sick. But why they are the not telling now? And so everything you ever feel now, I have philosophy. Jesus Christ felt the same thing when he was on earth here. He was weak at times. He was hungry. And so don't think that Jesus Christ don't know what you are feeling. And so you have strength. You are strong in the midst of what? Weakness. Temptations are everywhere. Fornication is there. How are you able to overcome the spirit of fornication? Are you able to overcome adultery? Are you able to overcome stealing? Anything you feel, I feel it also. I pop for this temptation. And Jesus Christ said in the place of the Bible, he said there is no temptation special. First Corinthians 10, verse 12 and 13. He said no temptation is too special for you. He said God must find a way for you to escape that temptation. Amen. Amen. The second temptation, he can never never offer this temptation now. As a soldier of Christ, no, he's not taking you. But so as it is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. That he may be able to bear it. Amen. So any temptation may come to your side. God knows that you can bear it. And so if you are a man or a woman, he knows your size of temptation. That is why he are permitted to come to you. If you hear me say amen. amen. I will never forget this very one. The president of uh, amen. amen. I will never forget this very one. Hallelujah. Amen. Another key is that. A good soldier's truth is always in the mouth of a good soldier. And a, a, a doctors are also very good soldiers. How do you find doctors that when they can't lie to their, to their, to their patients? They can't lie. Even when they are talking, they can't lie. They, 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 they can't lie. They represent the God. Because everything they say is against the medical practice. Lying. And so if they are talking to you now, it is the same thing. Like that. Genuine doctors who are ready for doctors. So also it is that a truth, truth is always the mouth of a gallant soldier, man of God. Truth is the mouth of a gallant soldier. Don't believe that the rest of are liars. No. If you are lying as a soldier, repent from it as a soldier of Christ. And so God will pardon you. If you hear me say amen. amen. And so I will never forget this one. Truth is in the mouth of a gallant soldier. Another point. We have it down. Amen. That is found in John chapter 8, verse 32 to 36. John 8, 32. That is the main place. But read to verse 36. We find what is there. I will never forget this man who was a very good gallant soldier during his time. While he was living on earth here. Our Bishop Mercy in Ahusa. He was a very good gallant soldier. Now, a, a, a gallant soldier is not a religious word. It's a physical adage, the word used in society. But the one that's making it different is so that's of Jesus Christ, so that's of Christ. If you go to internet, you'll find them a gallant soldier. If you go to dictionary, you'll find them a gallant soldier. But the difference is that are you a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ? I wish of the answer, with the way I move with him, was a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ who raised his time. He never allowed things to weak him. In the midst of weakness, he will give you the word of benefit. He will give you the word of faith. I don't know whether you are hearing me. In the midst of temptation, this 
man of God. He had, he had traveled all over the world. He, go, he went to the northern part of the world, in the south part, in the eastern part, in the western part. And today, we can say that a Gala Sonia is a man that has written his name in the sign of time. Put that one down. A Gala Sonia, definition of a Gala Sonia, is a man that has written his name in the sign of time. It's an idiomatic expression. A Gala Sonia is a man or a woman that has written his name in the sign of time. When you are reading your name in the sign of time, which means you are portraying, you have affected your generation. You are a Gala Sonia. One of the Gala Sonia of Christ is Abishop Basin Aosa. Another one is Ora Robert of America. He had universities where he trained Christians. Amen. Abishop Aosa had Bible school, first Bible school in Africa. I was school here and there. And so, to train Christians with where we are coming from. When I was in the school, the American student was the same school where I am. Kenya was there. All of the people were there from Ghana. You no, know, different tribe. When I was in Bible College. Our college boys were people of different set from South Africa, from, 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 from the Middle East. They were all in our Bible College, established by this Ghana Sonia. Another Ghana Sonia of Christ was one of the presidents that died in Africa last year. President, something first President Daligo, President of, of Zambia. Dr. Dr. Daligo, something like that, President of Zambia. How was he a Ghana Sonia? If you go to the name, you see the president of Zambia, the Ghana Sonia of Jesus Christ. How was he a Ghana Sonia? When I read about his biography, when he came to power, he announced to the nation that this nation, Zambia, is a Christian nation, it's not a Muslim nation. Only that one put his name in the sand of time in Zambia, it has never happened since Zambia started, that this country is a Christian nation. Before he died finally last year. Before you die, my brother, my sister, what will you be remembered for the Sodia of Christ? The Ghana Sodia of Christ. One more scripture before we run up. Glory to God. See how the Sodia of Christ. See how the Sodia of Christ. Amen. The Sodia of Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Sodia of Christ. Let's read this one, Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. God has so that of Christ doesn't give excuse. I said that one before, somehow, but one of our kids. I want that, I know, I know, another kid, so I'm on the seven kids now, so. He doesn't give excuse, so he's always going on. So as a soldier of Christ here in born again Christian church, do you give excuse all the time? Don't, don't come to church. And when people are sick, how do you know they are there that they are strong soldiers? The way they are certain the sickness. As if they are expecting to welcome to their life. See, I reject sickness. I reject, I, I reject disease. The Bible says in Acts 10 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went the bad way, healing all those who were sick. And the whole God was with him to conclude that scripture. As it is. So let's read this place. Second Samuel 11, verse 1 to 5. No excuse, oh, we are all marching on to war. Amen. Amen. So, another key, no excuse. Let's read that place. Open it, please. Second Samuel, verse 1 to 5. Uh, try to write up. Amen. Amen. Another key is that. A soldier cooperate with the red soldiers. A soldier is a cooperative, a soldier of rest is cooperative, is cooperative with his co soldiers. He's cooperative. Amen. Amen. He's cooperate what? Cooperative. You must cooperate with the red soldiers. Are you there, please? Second Samuel. If you are ready, if you are there, read for us. So that we can drive on our goals today. After the powers of darkness have been overthrown by Ambassador Innocent Justin and Uri, together with the host of the angel of God, the Michael Gruber, came to the devil last night. And I'm here to represent the whole country that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are in charge of our destiny. If you hear me say amen. 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 Second Samuel, read it please. Let's see what happened to Ikara, so what happened to him later. Hallelujah. Start to joke this time. 
He gathers soldiers and does not joke with his life. In the spring, in the spring, at the time when the king go off to war, David sent war out out with the king's men okay. and the whole Israel entire mm -hmm. army. They destroyed the Amalekites Amal okay. and they deserted Rehab. Then David remained in Jerusalem. Not even David got off from his bed and walked around on okay. the roof of the palace. Yes. On the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. He saw a woman bathing, and the woman was beautiful. Not being wife, oh. <laughs> Let's go on. Then David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, Isn't this the bad habit? The daughter of Eran, uh -huh. and the wife of Uron, okay. the Eratite. Then David sent message, messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Hmm. She had purified herself. Where are you now? Of cleanliness. Huh? I mean, four. four. Okay. Then she went back home. Fine. The woman conceived and sent. Word to David saying, I am pregnant. It's okay. After that, what happened? After she said, I am pregnant, what happened? So David sent this word to Job. Sent, sent me Uran, the uh -huh. Then Job, Job sent him to David. When Uran came to him, David asked him how one was, how the soldiers were, and how. The war was going. Then David sent to Uran, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uran left the place and got and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uran slept at the entrance of the palace with all his masters. Sam. It's okay, it's okay, my brother. Let's put on the time. Amen. Do you see that war was going on? A Ghana soldier of pride does not joke with his life. When you are seeing that people are carrying things there unnecessarily, playing with knife and different things, you want to last in your life, you pass the other way around. If we hear me say amen. amen. You pass the other way around. So that you can last to work for your country. So that you can last to work for Christ. Yes. You don't joke with sin because you are a very important personality. Well, let me come in fornication so that tomorrow I confess, confess and then I will repent. No! <laughs> no! A Ghana soldier of Christ does not joke with his life. You may be on top now. Christ will sound the trumpet. You can't make it. No room for repentance again. But when you are not joking with your life, you are constantly in focus with God's word and with God's anointing. And you are going to the message God sent for you. You are going to see that things are going to be better in your Christian faith. The Bible said here, for the benefit of those who came in, in first, second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. Amen. Amen. It told us about a story of glory to God. Verse 1 to 5. It told us about the story of a man called David. David the king, he slept with Uriah's wife. The Bible said that he was supposed to be going to war front. No, no, no. He was supposed to be going to a war front. A whole king, commander in king, commander in chief of the army. He was supposed to be on a war front. But he, well, he said, well, let me stay back. The time he wanted to relax, that is when the trumpet sound. The time he wanted to relax, that is when somebody can carry AIDS. We are the head of Pope who carry AIDS. And two, having said that, head of bishops. We are the head of good Christians who, who, fall, who fell away. Let them try to come back. It may not be possible to come back. You maintain your spiritual level. And so David, who was a king, who was a commander to destroy the yoke of darkness, and there was war going on, David was saying, Well, we already are we are successful. My brother, be careful for nothing. Philippians 4, verse 6. He said, be careful for nothing. He said, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Prayer and supplications, you have to be careful. And then he was flagging around. Well, we are more than a conqueror and successful. War was going on. My brother, when war is at stake, 
You don't need to flood it out. You need to be serious. You don't welcome negative things as if it's the normal thing to enjoy. No way. Even in the midst of sickness, you get up and say, I'm strong. Even in the midst of troubles, you get up and say, I am strong. I am going forward. Say, I'm going forward. Say, no devil can bring me down. Say, I'm a God so that of Christ. And David was going about when I'm the king, I'm successful. And he cited a woman who was having baits, who was having a bath, because those days they are started building for first three, three stories. It was in the duplex. And so he cited a poor man, woman, a poor man, wife, bathing over there. He said, He come out of the subject, who is that woman there? I saw love, I so beautiful. Whether well, beautiful or not, they should already be, they already see the decrease. And so they went to fetch her. Another man's wife. And the Bible says that David went to the woman. And where he sent his, his husband to who said, can kill the husband. You see, when a soldier began to fall, he began to behave jokingly to joke with his Christian faith. You are a soldier of Christ. Christ has called you. You have no right to joke with your life. You are going to a place. The Bible says that we are pilgrimage. We are pilgrims on pilgrimage. We are going somewhere. So you don't need to joke with your faith. We are going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. And David, what happened to him? He nearly lost his life. And the baby that was pregnant in that pregnancy, the baby died because it was an incubated baby. I pity that baby. Praise the Lord. And so, like I told you, that Abraham Lincoln was a soldier of Christ who declared fasting and prayer and thanksgiving the same time in America when the Second World War was on. That the first World War, Second World War. And one of our people that we have today as the soldier, that the soldier of Christ or a gallant soldier is like President Obama today is a gallant soldier. But I don't know whether it's a soldier of Christ, but it's a gallant soldier. The word gallant soldier is to describe a man who has written his name in the sand of time. It's an idiomatic expression. You have written your name in a progressive time that you are able to fight the battles to win for your people. During the time of uh, President Obama as a Ghana soldier, I think Bin Laden was killed. If I'm correct. Yes. Then George Bush was a Ghana soldier. Bin Laden was a terrorist of the whole world, not only to America. Anywhere good things are happening, go and bomb it. We don't know who bomb space some time ago. Somebody was behind it. And so we need to appreciate those people and get them down, whether in the spirit level or in the physical level. So what we are seeing in the physical is what is taking place in the spiritual level. And so as I am dressed in the physical as a soldier, or as a military man, as an army officer, army officer, that is how God requires everybody to dress in the spirit. That you are always ready all the time to fight the battles. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. So the physical one may not be necessary, but the spiritual one. A spiritual soldier of Christ does not joke with his life. And David joked with his life, he nearly died. And so let it go on. We remember that, uh, that Jesus Christ himself was a gallant soldier. <laughs> if you hear me say amen. amen. Jesus Christ was a Ghana soldier. He was a Ghana soldier. He came to the world and was doing good. He was healing the sick. That's the word of the Ghana soldier. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. He was a Ghana soldier. He was a first generation. After he died, what will you be remembered for? As a Christian, that will tell whether you are a Ghana soldier. Who was come, they brought unto him many who were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Hey, Jesus comes a So, are you a Ghana soldier? A Ghana soldier affects the world. Another word affects the generation. You don't live in an environment and your name is hidden out of Christ. You must promote Jesus in your name. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to. I have to give the testimony that I am the golden colors of Jesus Christ. I am about to say it. No, not that this guy never addressed it. No, I want to display to, to interpret how the colors of should be dressed in the spirit. I have a pastor friend. I have preached to him twice in an upper room there. Children. And about three weeks 
weeks ago, or nearly one month, he called me. He said, man of God, I have always respected you. And I call to respect you today that you are a great man of God. He was present and said, well, I know before. It was so strange because we do greet ourselves before. He said, do you know that? Do you know what God used to do in my life? I said, I don't know. I said, right now. He said, I was in a revelation and I came in a very powerful, awesome dress. Like, and he said, I was too celebrated in that dream. He said, we were too celebrated in that revelation. It was a like congregation of a church, but you were the most celebrated that they, they were welcoming that have on top of that place. He said that when you came in, they were trying to give him Miss Oyer with food to give to him in a way. He said that like, I came so glorious. He said, as you came with your dresses so fantastic and glorious, you told him, never you eat that thing. If you try it, take that thing away from your side. He said, this is the pastor who said, take you. I look at the way he's well dressed. He said, so I rejected that thing that I wanted to accept. He said, so many I woke up. I said, Pastor, you know, see this in God. And God has used it to warm my revelations. Put your hands together for Jesus. Holy my arm of Jesus. Don't only him. Don't only him. I was going up with my group, a gallon soda of wine affect the revelation. Don't count yourself and talk to my friend again. Don't believe this. <laughs> my me, there is a me. Put me for America and shake it. Put me for America and shake it. Not here. No who do I see. Now this is not me. My me, there me. I am affected. My environment is too great. I am loaded. Holy my I went to talk with somebody here, one of our ministers. We are going for this on evangelism. <laughs> Holy my yes and that. Say, I'm a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. And I do so far by the good side. Say, I'm going forward. Gallant soldier of Christ, he faced temptation that people of the world cannot explain. You write it down in one of the keys. God has the of Christ. Face the tradition that people of the world cannot have a validity and the tradition of one of my ministers. And the lady saw me, you know, I'm telling you, we believe, you know, in, in Panama, in I, I saw you in my dream, they were trying to kill you, and the one that came to save me. I'm telling you something. Say I'm a Ghana soldier. He said, you were the person that came to save me in that dream. Notice you are the person. Ah, my brother. How is this thing happening? By prayers, by fasting. There are battles I am fighting in this town. People have ganged up in the street, less than a I am killing. Who we'll be a baby here? I'm on top I am not putting my power. I am putting the dressing that is in me, not the dressing outside. And that Jesus. And the Bible says, Greater is he that is in me than the forsaken state and who is in the world. Say, I am more than the conqueror. The Bible says in Romans 8 37, He said, In all these things, I am more than the conqueror. I am too loaded to fail. Greater is he that is in you. I'm not going to the day. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, He said, Man of God, Jesus is the same yesterday. He is the same. Today, it is same forever. If you did it before, he can do it again. Say my life, he can do it. 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 Put your hands together for Jesus. I give you another key that I random. Amen. He got us here. A gala soldier of Christ have a spirit behavior. Say so a gala soldier of Christ has a spirit behavior. And your spirit behavior, we are knowing the people of this world who are carnal. First Corinthians 2, verse 15 or so. He said, A carnal minded man cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are foolishness unto him. Neither do he know them because they are spiritually designed. First Corinthians 2 15. Before we read 2 Corinthians 10 3 to, to 6. A carnal man, a carnal minded man cannot understand the things of the spirit. So, as one of my kids says, you have a spirit behavior. Amen. You have what? A 
they are spewing behavior. Verse 14, not 15 now, verse 14. Of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually designed. And we are moving on. That is for a carnal man, cannot understand. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6, we are running on with this one. You have a spirit behavior. That is what people cannot understand. And I'm offended for people with my behavior. Let me say it's not sort of the year, not what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I refuse to be carnal. I will keep on offending people because I refuse to be carnal. I'm so spiritual. And so have a spirit behavior. Glory to God. Amen. Even some of the speech I say are not natural. Some of the statements I make, even to my family, to my wife, they may not be natural. And they misunderstand me at times. And so can even come and say, you are a wicked man, you are a bad man, because it takes spiritual to, to identify with the, with the physical. He take things like that. Do I speak? Do I have a spirit behavior? Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6. Let's go. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh, as a soldier of Christ. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6. He said, although my red papa be my yena, Although we are in the flesh here, yeah, flesh and blood is flowing in our veins. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6. Although blood is flowing in our veins, does not mean that we are fighting with class and knives. We are fighting spiritual battle. So Those who will have the last one get to do respect for God. If you hear me say amen. amen. We do not go after flesh. Some people think that they've been I will deal with you because of fleshly things. But spiritual things, say, Satan, the devil, I cast you out. Leave that body. You are troubling now. So you are fighting spiritual battle today. We do not pass the battle where we are going to I will deal with you. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to start first. Let me see for one. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not pass the flesh. Though we rent the house, it doesn't mean that we are in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling out of strongholds, <laughs> casting down imaginations, and every eye team that result is set against the knowledge of God and bringing up activity, every thought to the obedience of Christ, the six, and having the readiness to revenge all obedience when your obedience be fulfilled. He said, Though we walk in the flesh, we are not going after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare that we are using to fight, not police carrying gun or knife, not police carrying place, breastplate with iron, so that this cannot affect it, like bulletproof. No! We are soldiers of Christ. Amen. Amen. We are soldiers of Christ. And soldiers of Christ, truth is found in your mouth. I don't know if you ever heard of a story. A young man came from Europe, either from abroad or from America, I don't know, to Africa, to Nigeria. And he knows that. In where it's coming from, military people or either a horseman or a policeman, they are well honored and they can protect their citizen. He said, No way to sleep, no hotel. Uh -huh. Let me go to the police station and I had my sister that they can protect me. Amen. And the police took the young man, collected the money from him, and killed him. He has no self dignity as a soldier to the country. But we the soldiers of Christ, we don't kill people, we bring people to life. Amen. We give life to people. Amen. There are some reasons that may be doing that. Amen. Amen. We are head of people in America and Africa. Billy King, and that's something king in Africa. He kills several people in the church. We don't do that. We are entrusted with leadership of honor to protect these people and preserve them for Christ. And so we are spirits. So people say, well, holy, holy. It's good to do it like that. Oh, let's do it spiritual. No, we are not spiritual. We are spirits. The guy in charge of being spiritual. I'm not being spiritual. I'm a spiritual being living in this flesh. I'm a spirit. I'm not spiritual. I'm a spirit. It's correct statement. I'm a spirit. He said, but the weapons of our are not carnal. 
So we are not fighting against physical human beings. We are not carrying guns to Afghanistan or to Africa to wherever. We are carrying spiritual guns, fighting every day by prayers, by fasting, by studying the word and releasing the word in bullets. And the devil, they are afraid of you. If you hear me say amen. amen. So what am I saying tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. The weapon that you are using, they are not supposed to be carnal. For you are a spiritual being. No matter what happened to your faith, no matter how they lie against you, you are still going to remain a Christian believer. Thank you for your faith. Holy my heart of you. Thank you, oh Lord. I want to stand for today. I want to be that soldier. A soldier that will stand for you. No more joke with sin. No more lying. No more staying idle. I am going forward. I am going ahead. No matter what I face. No matter the battle I see. I will still remain a believer. I will fight until the end. No retreat. No surrender. The truth is found in me. I must act. I must say this in the spirit way. I am living in the spirit level. I will believe I here. In the name of Jesus. Let every believer of Christ. Who are here today. Who are all over the world. Hear the sound of my voice. Let them pick up their spiritual gun. Let them pick up their spiritual weapon. And begin to fight against the devil. Because we are not just the against man. We are just against the evil one. Who want to stand against our way? Who want to stop us from making? We are making it. We are the soldiers of Christ. We have the victory over the devil. In the name of Jesus. Holy by Amatoto. In Jesus' name we pray. Please carry your gun spiritually. We want to load something. We want to we want to we want to wage war. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody today. Yes. We are going to pray and say, Lord, 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 Lord. the evil doers standing against the church in Europe. In Europe. That are made the church not to fear God. Destroy that evil doer right now.
I thank God for your life. How was that telecast or the preaching I preached today so powerfully? And that program is so exciting about a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what I'm saying is that God Almighty never fails. He has, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, that Christ has conquered the devil and has put the victory in your hand. And so as a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ, continue to defend the victory that Christ has put in your ego hand. I want to pray with you in this sweet program of this moment of change that God will continue to guide you and lead you on to be a successful soldier all the days of your life and no retreat, no surrender. Father, thank you, Lord, that everyone that has won this telecast, you continue to guide them to remain a gallant soldier of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father, because you are our strength. Say that the devil has no back. According to the decree of the rebels who rebel against God, of the sub session 12 of Revelation, session 11, whereby a Jamaica overcame Satan, the devil, by the word of God, by the blood of Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. Thank you, my lasting Father. We are strong. We are brave. We are fearless. In I just want Jesus to be name. where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are In your dwelling place forever Take me to the place where you are Cause I just want to be with you Cause I just want to be with you I want to be where you are in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, surrounded by your glory.